Yo, 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 what's going on, world? It's your boy Najee from rapradar.com. And today I got a very special guest, man. Seated to my right. Hey, if you know anything about today's landscape of hip hop, you've undoubtedly heard about NBA Youngboy. Here is the mastermind behind a lot of his work. The engineer, I got my man Jason Goldberg. What's up, my brother? Thank you for having me. Man, what's up, brother? How are you? I'm good, thanks. Man, um, sincerely control, man. What, yeah, what a fire. moment. Um, I think I saw a stat that said, um, I think it was Tupac, Lil Wayne, and now NBA Youngboy would be the only yeah, I'm people. Really, I'm really rooting for history on this one. Yeah, incarcerated, I think that would have a number one. Yeah. Um, what does that mean to you, just to like be able to be a part of a project that means this much? I don't know. I kind of have a running, a running thing going. It's like when you work as hard at something, um, you want to make an impact, right, within yourself. Um, and uh, and I think um, with that impact, um, hopefully you're stretching boundaries of what's been done before, and um, you know you are making history, you know, and. Uh, and I, and I and I think I think uh, you know I hope it happens. But yeah. uh, you know, if nothing else, we did it last year. Bro went number one, you know, three times in a year. You know, pre-sale went number one in history. You feel me? Like, um, it's just such such an insane talent, you know. And I'm you know lucky to be able to help him do what he loves. I mean, he he's so entrenched. Right. He has one of the most rabid fan bases in the game. Like, when you guys are in the process and sort of recording, um, how do you play into that? Like, is, is there, like, certain things? Is it just kind of him, like, making music with the fans in mind? Is it just, like, him kind of just... No, going? no, I mean, when we, when we... I don't think anything else exists. You know, nobody's allowed in the room, and it's just me and him. You know, and then, you know, people come in and, and hang while we hang, but during the recording process, yeah. volume's off. Nobody can hear anything. Nobody gets the music. Nobody touches anything, you know. And and it's up to his discretion if he wants to play it, you know. After that, but yeah. um, you know, it's it's just a room. It's just a space. And you know, I was telling you earlier that's that's the cool thing about this project. I don't think we recorded one of the songs in a studio. Right. You I know? mean, that's that's super interesting. I mean, like you said, we were, we were talking off camera and just you know, I, I think I asked you just about. You know, young boy in the studio. You said you, you know, he records in different spaces. You guys didn't spend a lot of time in the studio. Why? Why is that? Like, why do you think? I guess you know the studio isn't his vibe. You guys are setting up elsewhere. Yeah, we had a few sessions in the studio, and and they were productive, but I think we're most productive just moving around and just. It's also the excitement of um, of changing, changing spaces, and mm. I think, and it's, you know, so like last project we had a studio for weeks before the album, right? Okay. And we probably would have done this this round, but that got cut short. Yeah. Right? And um, and so we never had that time. We only had our run throw down. You know, I walk around with a backpack, a Pelican case, and a suitcase with two weeks of clothes in it that have my speakers. Mm. And um, we'll hop between hotel rooms and, you know, houses and you know a few of the records on there you know life support was recorded you know cross country going from new york to utah mm, wow you know and you can hear the you can hear the road in there too but you know we would have ended up in a location and then probably cut even a few more records that would have made the cut i know we did like during top we had an extra three that we added yeah you know? well, what do you feel like i mean i guess was the because a lot of especially just culturally i see a lot of people feeling like top is a classic i think i seen uh dj academics tweeted just that the other day like yeah just one plot what do you think is is there a difference just in the you know the recording in the process in top versus i mean obviously like the you know what happened with his legal trouble but was there a difference just in the recording process mm, i think um well top has some of my favorites. I mean, All In was recorded on a tour bus, right? We did that cross country. Um, uh, Casey Talk was in a studio, you know. Big record. Yeah, it's probably Love one of record. my favorites. Yeah. And um, you know, I remember that energy in there because it felt like a real. It felt like a real moment when uh, you're sitting behind the desk, you know, and you have the artist, and you you have one of those moments where it's. You know, you remember it like you're watching some old footage of the Beatles or something. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. And it was it was it was a special thing that happened in the studio. But we have a lot of those moments. Yeah. You know. Just those special. I, I, yeah, I'm a fan too. You know. Sure. Uh, but I, it's a fan of just the appreciation and how we communicate and create together. You I love know, that. it's you know, so it's, um, but, just, too talented. So tell me, I mean, with this project, like, you know, being that he got locked up earlier this year, were all the recordings, were these things that you guys, like, all worked on prior and then you were just kind of mixing? Is it like, you know, you're sending stuff to him while he's yeah, inside? No, I mean, like, how, how does that work, just him kind of giving the final approval? Yeah, for this whole thing, I mean, his memory is amazing. You put him on here and you say, Top, what are the lyrics from, you know, a record? Mm -hmm. And just right off the top. And you can just remember it and just spit. Every line which is crazy because I, I'm i always blown away when we're recording mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do the song and it's all off the top of his head, yeah. but then I go back and he wants to do ad libs, start to finish and hits every word. Mm. I, like I, I, I'm, I think I said it a couple of times, I'm like, Yo, how did you memorize the entire song? Like you didn't write it. Right. You know, um, it's just fantastic. But um, yeah, I mean. I, I guess we'll just like, so, being that he's inside, I mean, like, does he do you, uh, does he get the final word to say? Yeah, like, how so, does that work? Just so that we booked the studio um, for the um, track list, yeah. right, for putting together the project. Mm -hmm. And we did that for top two. So this was our, our second go around where we, you know, and this was after Until I Returned, and we spent some time at the house to put that together. So yeah. so we've, we've been developing a trust and um, communication that's working, right? And both of our, you know, he's like, I put together a list that I thought would work. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then he's got the ones to throw in. You know, it's like our minds are really, um, we're in the same place for this one, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, so uh, I played him over the speakers on yeah. a phone call. You know, oh, on I, a think, phone. I think there's actually a picture of me on Instagram with me on the phone um, listening to music through the speaker seat. Wow. So what I have to do is have him on my ear. Yeah. I put the bottom of the microphone towards the speakers. Right. And then um, I can hear if he says, hold on, or says anything, because I got him at my ear all the time, right? But then he's hearing everything that's come through. Mm. And there's actually, uh, you know, there's a picture up of, of us putting together the album of that. So he's, so he's in jail just listening on a, on a jail phone, yeah, just kind of like yep. playing a speaker and just kind of coordinating how he wants the records? Yeah. Wow. And so um, that's just a tribute to his, you know, his wizardry of just where his head's at. I mean, he knows the songs. And and then I might say, you know, maybe this could be cool, you know, musically, how they blend together. Sure. Um, but, you know, I think he popped off one, two, three, four, five, and I was right there with him, one, two, three, four, five, you know. Mm, I love that. Um, uh, but, yeah. Yeah. T tell me how just because, and this is just from listening to, to young boy's music i mean he's a guy that obviously he, he's been through a lot you know a, a lot of trust issues and it feels like you know he doesn't he, he doesn't gravitate to too many people so tell me yeah. just about that like you know your relationship and kind of you know it's a special relationship with an engineer and an artist right like where they have to develop that type mm -hmm. of trust for you to to be able to give you you know to be able to really let you do what you do with their art how did that kind of come about like you know when you first met him in the process of just kind of building the relationship yeah i think it happened really naturally I was working with Rich, the kid, for about eight months, and um, I got a, a really strong relationship with Rich and, and that family over there. So um, we did the album, we did Boss Man, and then um, we were working on Nobody Safe, which was a mm -hmm. collaboration, yep. right? And um, we hopped on a plane one day uh, and headed out to Louisiana and met up with YB for mm -hmm. the first time. And it was... Um, that was the first time they met, Rich and Youngboy? Well, they... No, they're, they're buds. Okay, okay. But it was the first time I met YB. Right, right, right. Um, but that's why, because of the relationship with Rich and their relationship, mm -hmm. you know, we recorded the first song we did for that record, and um, and we didn't say anything to each other. But that's how I rock. Now, I've been doing this a long time, so the, my favorite part is to meet somebody I've never worked with before mm -hmm. and just fly with them. Mm. You know, that is the coolest thing, man. When you can get here and you don't you don't know each other. Yeah. But you guys can can connect musically and just just hit it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the first time that we went and we were flying and no words were exchanged the whole thing. All the punches he wanted were dropped, you know? You know, ba ba ba, right? And uh I looked at him when we played it back and he just looked at me. He's kind of feeling me out. 
and I and I just said, you know, I was fire, you know. <laughs> yeah. And he nodded, and that was it. So that was the first time. That we, was the first. So he yeah. didn't. It wasn't too much interaction, but you could tell he was just feeling you yeah, out. Yeah, that was the first time. Then we ended up doing some stuff back in L.A. I was with Rich doing Nobody Safe, and they needed somebody to come by the studio. So Montana hit me. I was like, can you come by? And um, I showed up, and we did Red Eye that night. Mm. And now we got a hit on our hands. Yeah. Right now we have a really strong record that went on the album yeah. or the tape. And he was like, you recorded that? And, you know, Rich was like, yo, Jason's the man. Right? Mm. Rich, Rich, you know, because... And, and from there he was like, what are you doing? You want to come, um, come with me after the session? And then he was like, don't turn me down. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going to turn you down, man. Let's go. Uh, man, I, I love that. Um, I thought one of the things that is interesting because like, again, young boy, he doesn't do too many interviews, right? So like, I think the totality of what we as fans get from him is just kind of from the music and then what we see in the media. Yeah. Um, when you're looking in the media, like he has like this scary rapper thing to him, right? Like just, you know, a guy that's really been entrenched in the streets and, you know, well, carry the, the music, yeah. do, you, do you feel that? Like, does that, like in the recording process, do you feel that energy of like, you know, yeah. A guy that's from the street in the studio. I mean, like, I feel that when I listen to the music. Yeah. Back, like yeah. I mean, listen to I'm like, whoa, right. this happened, right. you know. But in the space, it's just me and him, and we laugh, and we joke, and we have the this the, this coolest creative, you know, environment, hmm. right, to where we're comfortable, and I think we both have to be comfortable. And, and if he's comfortable with me, and I'm comfortable with him, then then we can express ourselves and get vulnerable. Right. Right. And um, and I think there's a lot of that in this album, you know. I think there's a lot of experimentation and and pushing the envelope of some soundscapes and um, and him, you know, getting deep into the lyric content, you know. But um, yeah, no, I'm. I, if anything, you know, uh, I feel the most comfortable with YB because you know, I know that he, you know, yeah, never let anything happen or 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 put me in a situation that was um, going to make me uncomfortable. Absolutely. I mean, I, I like how you said just him laughing because like, you know, the internet perception, like even from TikTok, like everything is like when you talk about YB, all the fans are super gangster, just overly tough. So like when you see like, you know, those types of stories of him like laughing and lighthearted, I mean, yeah. we don't really get that. Is that something like, is that a part of his personality that you feel just... Well, I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of this just out to, to space man like so i don't allow any of this stuff get in the way of how i want to be you know so i'm going to 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 want to laugh yeah. right and i'm going to try to to bring that because if we're not having fun making music then i don't want to do it mm. right mm -hmm. and um and so i think there's a lot of that that's just you know that happens naturally yeah no for sure i love that um, I want to transition a little bit, man, because you do have a pretty storied history just, you know, out, outside of Young Boy, and, um, you know, I, I have a lot of just people that watch this show that, you know, are engineers, aspiring engineers and things of that oh, nature. Cool. So when you're talking about, like, other artists that, you know, you've worked with, I know you told me a, a crazy story about, you know, working with Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, yeah, I was, um, I, I put my time in at a studio. I did a lot, you know, I, I kind of went the old the old way, and I did school. I did two years, right, in Sue Roddy Research Full Sail, and then ended up in an internship at Capitol. Did that for a little while, but they didn't want to hire me, and you know, I wasn't willing. I would have ended up there, and ultimately, I don't think it was the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little too traditional, but a lot of respect for the building. Um, and you know, Paula is just um, a veteran in the industry that I learned a lot from on my way in. Um, from there I transitioned and kind of, I ran into Hans Zimmer's engineer randomly mm. at a place mm. and, um, you know, he knew I interned there and, and was doing, uh, the school stuff. And, um, you know, he said, show up at this time, ask for this person. And he kind of just, you know, got me into the building. He asked me one question. He said, create a new track, make it a stereo track. And I went really slowly to the window. He's like, nah, don't, don't use the mouse. And I said, okay. And I just you know, flipped it. He's like, all right, you got the job. Mm. And I ended up there for about a year. We were doing some movies for music, uh, music for movies. And, um, and that was rad. You know, those were the most intense, um, the most intense environment I've been at at the time. Yeah. 
you know. So um, 35 hour days, five days a week, pulling in 120 hour weeks, seven days a week, mm. um, 365 days a year. It's uh, 18 hours minimum. You know, it's um, it's uh, it's 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 go 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 all the time. Yeah. And I loved every second of it, and I learned so much. But um, I wanted to get back into music. Mm. Right. And uh, this studio just opened up in Santa Monica, Windmark Recording, and they opened their doors. And I sent out a, a application over uh, Internet and he took an interview with me and he um, offered me an internship. Hmm. And um, I took it immediately because um, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I went up from the ground, intern runner, assistant, head runner. Um, started running the rental company mm. and just learning, learning, learning to get the respect of this building, you know, to be able to sit in this chair and really understand the environment. I love that. Right. And, um, you know, you know, four years down the line, I'm coming in to work in a room of this size um, just to twist some knobs and run flow and do all sorts of crazy stuff that we would never actually do, but that I wanted to experience. Sure. And as I'm walking up, I see Kendrick sitting on the steps of Studio F. So that, at this point, what what Kendrick is this? Is this like Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick? Like this is this is this is Kendrick on Goosebumps. Oh, this is Kendrick on Go on Travis Scott Goosebumps. Yeah. So he's already lit. And he's just sitting on the steps, just chilling, just waiting for the session to start, and nobody knows he's there by himself. You know, just... like this is like yeah, like there's a glow around the man at this point. You feel <laughs> yeah, me? Right. You're like okay. So I call the studio manager immediately, and I'm like. Um, uh, Yo, know, Kendrick's sitting on the steps. He said, open Studio F, put him in there. You can engineer it, get him going. I said, okay. You know, I'm going to call Blake and get him over here. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. So I get the stuff set up, make sure he's comfortable, get him all this, you know, sit him down, make sure he's got some food and some drinks, and then get this, the microphone set up, get this hard drive hooked up, getting ready to go, and Blake walks right in. I tag team him in. Mm. He sits down, and I hear just... Bah! And that was the verse for Goosebumps that they laid down right there. Wow. You know, that we got because, you know, I think I showed up early. Mm. So because you were there early and you saw Kendrick there and brought it to the attention, that's why you feel yeah, like that. I mean, who knows how long we would have got there. I mean, I would have, you know, those years were hectic because, you know, a half hour notice I had to run over to the studio. I, there was no life. Yeah. You know, so uh, there still isn't much, you know, but, you know, you, you evolve into, you know, owning you know, how you want uh, to work in the industry. But for, you know, a good decade, um, I'd say uh, I was, you know, yes to everything, no matter what, mm. anytime. Oh, I'm going on a date to go grab dinner. I'm sitting down before we order, or maybe it's in the middle of dinner and I get the call to hit a session, drop the cash and say, I'll see you later, mm. you know, and get there so that I can start up for that, for that, that night, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean it's a journey. Uh, I, I, I love. I, th you know, I think, I think coming up under educated people that have the experience um, is really important. It was a huge part for me. I had a lot of really good mentors. Mm. I had a lot of really good people to say, "You're being a little dumb right now," mm. you know, yeah. or um, push me to be better. And um, you know, they taught me how to listen. Mm, I love that. Like when you just because I guess, you know, just as an engineer, I'd, I'd imagine like listening is such a big part of, of, you know, the job. But like, how do you what's the balance between like, you know, you, you're recording street artists like YB, you recorded like guys like Kendrick or Lil Wayne. Like, how do you as an engineer sort of um, is there a difference just in the way the energy flows or the chemistry like between these artists or is it like relatively the same like or do you have to put yourself in a certain space yeah so i'm invisible regardless of whatever happens i i treat it from day one you know i'll sit in this chair and i'll stare at a screen you know because it's not my space it's the creative space of an artist and i'm there to help facilitate you know that creativity and so you know i think for the guys coming up my advice would just be three steps ahead all the time 
Make sure stuff's looking right. You know, if somebody's reaching for a water, pass it over. If somebody's getting ready to record, make sure you got Pro Tools open. Yeah. You know, if somebody wants to hear a beat, make sure the aux is open. Or, you know what I mean? Just just be steps ahead all the time. Because yeah. once you're steps ahead all the time, they don't have to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. There's ultimately a trust that develops very fast. Mm. Nobody has to tell me what to do, you know? Um, and if they do, you know, I, I love that. But, like, um, yes, sir. You know what I mean? As fast as I can and as diligently as possible, like, that's my job, right. you know? And then we get on the microphone, then we get to have some fun. Yeah. And now I get to enjoy myself with them um, in a way that, like I said earlier, we get to fly together, yeah. you know? And that's where more trust develops. And then, oh, wow, we got a record. We both vibe into it. Oh, let's do another one. And, you know, now we're, now we're, now we're hanging out. Right. Maybe some questions or some talking might happen. But, right. you know, it, until I can... Um, you know, it doesn't matter what I've done. I'm a big believer. I don't care what I've done. Mm. It's what I'm going to do that night. Mm. That's how good I am on any situation, right? Um, and and I, I take that very seriously. Um, tell me about the process of working with Lil Wayne, man. One of the greatest rappers of all time. Yeah, that was... Um, we're all going to hear it very soon because it's a Lil Wayne tape. Uh, the Kid. Featuring Rich the Kid. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, when I got hit for that session, Rich was like, yo, we're doing a Wayne tape. I was like, what? You know, yeah. because um, I've heard stories about those sessions, and they're supposed to be very intense sessions. Mm. And so I hit a lot of my engineer guys that those uh, opportunities have, have hit. And, you know, I, I have quite a few friends that are so talented. And so I talked to them to get prepped for it. Um, well, we walked in the doors, and... And again, just so smooth, so easy, so natural, you know, and, um, you know, because because Wayne has his engineer. Right. And right. Rich is I'm Rich's engineer. Right. So yeah. when we're going, you know, um, I will say just the process was different than anything I've ever seen, you know, um, because he'll just listen to a record for an hour. Right. And just listen to it. And you're not sure what he's doing. And then um, he'll walk in the room and say, I'm ready, and just perform the song that he's written in his head. Mm. And he's got all the lyrics memorized. How long did you say, would you say that, that took? That took? I mean, he, he punches once or twice after that just because he's hearing it back and maybe yeah. he wants to hear it and then does a punch and, go and continues. Mm. And then maybe adjusts, you know, depending on how everything's working and the energy. But... Um, that was really special. But but I remember being, the, the energy in that, I felt like I was in the ring, heavyweight, championship round. Um, you got to be, you got to be ready to go the distance. Yeah. You know, because, um, yeah, it was, that was really special. I, I love that. Um, did it feel like greatness? Like when you're watching yeah. that, it feels, does it feel like yeah, greatness? Yeah, it feels different. But, but also, I think I'm just been really lucky. Uh, recently to be working with so many talented people you know i kind of always capture those moments like yeah this this feels special yeah you know but listening back to you know it's just i love i love hip-hop man i love rap music no nah, for know? sure and um there's something really special about the rhythms and the way that uh the way that it happens and the way that they do it another huge artist and you know very untimely death pop smoke yeah. Um, I know you did, you did the, you engineered the Woo. Yeah, I was with him right before he passed away. Um, and uh, we had the studio. And, um, you know, that would have been special because. Um, when you say right before, you mean like the day before? A couple of days before? No, I, know I was, was with him that night. Oh, that night? Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, I was. Uh, we finished up our little run for the week and I was making sure that everything, you know, was good for the A and R and I was making sure all the bounces were correct and I was at home and then the assistant hit me and said, Did you hear? And I was like, What are you talking about? Hmm. And I saw the news and I broke down a bit right there because he was just a kid and that one hit me kinda of hard. But yeah. um um man, what another talented talented individual in the game. Um far too soon was it different engineering him just being that his 
vocal tone is like a baritone, right? Like I feel yeah, like not any too double many rappers. Zone. Oh, Annie's. So how is, is that yeah, different? So like, just like yeah, it's cool. I love the flow. I think a, a couple guys are picking up on that style now, and um, you know they're really tight. I think I, for the most part, I kind of leave this stuff. I see. So I might we're doing it all on the fly, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll be punching and then I'll be nudging and making sure that stuff's there. You know, sometimes I'll even be vocal lining live as mm. the stuff's going, you know what right. I mean? Just to make it super tight. Yeah. Um, but you gotta, you know, use your ear and find out what works best. Um, you know, um, yeah, but uh, sometimes I'll do clumsy edits too, just because you can't really hear them. And so, you know, you slice them and then just nudge as the record, there's going record, you know, nudging and making sure that you're just looking at the, um, the transients and everything in uh, Pro Tools. But, um, if I feel like I, I really want it to be super tight, then I'll then I'll just vocal line the two of them on the fly, yeah. just like that. But never skip a beat. Never have the artist wait for a punch. All right, run it back. Cool. Always just, you know, this because look, right now today, I haven't worked with an artist that's written a song in a very long time. Songwriters, some of the stuff that we're writing for, um, we'll write stuff down, but a lot of my guys are just right off the top of the head, mm. right? And so you gotta imagine being there and recording um, to where you have to remember the song. I, I got tricks for it, you know what I mean? Maybe I want somebody to remind of a lyric or come down or a melody and go into it, but all of that stuff's happening, so you have to be really fast, mm. you know, because we're the pen and paper now. You know what I mean? This, this right here is what they're writing on, Yeah. you know? And we have to make it feel as natural so that those ideas come as fluidly, you feel me? Love that. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, deeper voice and, I mean, just the melodies and, and the flows, you know, I was blown away every time with those sessions. Uh, uh, that's what's up, man. I, I didn't want to take up too too much of your time, I know. I appreciate you having me. Um, it's, cool to, it's cool to meet you. You have yeah. a pretty, really storied history. Um, lastly, man, just tell me, like, I guess, you know, out of all the sessions you did and everybody you work with, kind of what what's the session that stands out in your head? Like, just something that, like, you know, it's one of those memorable times that you're just like, man, that was, that was one of those moments. Man, man. I'm blessed. I'm a, I'm a lucky dude right now. I I can't. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. You know I. You know any any session I have that I figure out a problem, you know and solve a problem. Like I said, it doesn't matter what I've done before. It's what I'm doing now, mm. and that's my favorite moment. And that person I'm working with is all that matters. You know, and that's that's how I keep you know my focus. Man, so tell me, just give me an update. Like, you know, how is Young Boy doing, man? He's been locked up for a bit. The fans, the fans have been clamoring and and wanting to hear from him. I know you speak to him pretty regularly. How how is he doing? Is he in good spirits? Yeah. Um, you know, every time I talk to him, it's never heavy. You know, even though it's such a heavy situation, it feels like such a weight, and we never feel any of it. You know, and the conversations are just, you know, I try to laugh. And, you know, but it's it's always just positive and amazing. And he's, you know, he's, it's been six months. It's been a while. We're ready to have him back, you know. But, um, you know, we don't, in our conversations, uh, like you said, they're pretty frequent. But um, it's just never heavy. So it's always, yeah, I stay, he's in good spirits for the most part, just keeping up with everything and, you know, um, ready to get back out and start making music. Yeah. Yeah. Dope episode of Cigar Talk, man. Engineers, I know y'all got some gems for that one. My man, Jason, I appreciate you pulling up. Thank you, brother. Appreciate man, you having me. we out of here.